Lucy Maud Montgomery's The Blue Castle is certainly not as well known as Emily or Anne or any of those other things that like have made it into popular culture. But somehow the story and the lessons from it have really connected with a number of women who I've spoken with recently. So I thought that I'd go back and take a look. The Blue Castle starts out with a very heartfelt set of experiences that our protagonist Valencia is having around just like how difficult it is being a woman in the nine, probably the 19 teens. It's published in 1920. Um, but how difficult it is figuring out how to live within society's constraints and her family's constraints. She has grown up with a very accomplished cousin and her cousin is, you know, popular and is poised and connects well with people. And she's like maybe intelligent, probably not, but she's beautiful and all those things are going for her. Whereas Valancy has struggled with connecting with people. She struggles saying her own mind. She struggles with a lot and she has internalized a lot of the negative messages that she's heard from her family over the years. An old maid at 29, she has grown up always seeing herself as second best, never being the privileged one, never being the popular one, always feeling weird. And as many of us growing up feel weird, especially those of us who grow up reading books. So I think that there's initially this like immediate connection is like, I don't fit in, my family doesn't get me, I'm weird. And one of the interesting things about this book, which is a romance novel, is that it starts out with her actually saving herself on multiple levels. First, she is saved by a book. Then next, she is saved by going out and ignoring what society is telling her to go and be helpful for somebody else. Then she takes responsibility for her own happiness by asking somebody else to marry her. And then she becomes a full person in that marriage by really connecting with nature and connecting with this other person. But more, I think it's actually about the connection with nature. One of the key things for Valancy is that when we first meet her, she feels like life is passing her by, but also like there's never going to be any change. The only, uh, her time just keeps on dragging and there's no difference from day to day. Uncle Benjamin was a wealthy and childless old widower, and Valancy had been brought up in the fear and admission of his money. If she offended him, he would cut her out of his will, supposing she was in it. Valancy did not want to be cut out of Uncle Benjamin's will. She had been poor all her life and knew the galling bitterness of it, so she endured his riddles and even smiled tortured little smiles over him. Again, this idea that when we don't have financial means, we end up doing things that we don't like to do. We end up having to be smaller than we want to be. We end up having to pretend to be somebody who we aren't. In the depths of her despair, Valancy reaches to books. And it is in this connection that she first starts to save herself. Fear is the original sin, wrote John Foster. Almost all the evil in the world has its origin in the fact that someone is afraid of something. It is a cold, slimy serpent coiling about you. It is horrible to live with fear, and it is of all things degrading. And how many times have we made decisions because we were fearful? And how many times do we know that there's a better way forward and we still go with the thing that is easier, that is less scary? Valancy's choice to start ignoring those fears, to start ignoring the fears of poverty as an old lady, to start ignoring the fears of what will her family say, to start ignoring the fears of what will the church say. All those things are what enable her to then move on and take a position to help a girl who is currently dying of tuberculosis. And once Valancy starts to take even a little bit of space for herself, start to tell people a little bit what she thinks, then all of a sudden the structures around her start to weaken a little bit. It's not that they were completely unwilling to let her do these things. They just thought that they could get away with it. 
and that I think is also a good learning for us is that when we think that there are these huge barriers to who we want to be, it could be that it just takes a little bit of discomfort and then other people will cope. It's not just us who has to keep on making ourselves smaller. By doing that, by performing this act of service, by throwing away popular convention, she starts to discover herself. She starts connecting to people in a meaningful way. She starts to discover that she actually enjoys being useful. All the things that had held her back in her past are not really real. Valancey's transformation really comes to the fore when she realizes that her time is precious and she believes that she only has one year left to live. As I said, her first step is, well, her first step which is before almost anything else is to throw the potpourri out the window. The next step is to go to the doctor to take care of her own physical well-being. Then she decides to go and help somebody else. And with all of that, she then goes back to being selfish. What would make her happy for this final year? And it would be to get married. And she has set her heart on this disreputable stranger and uh, who has a heart of gold and turns out to be a millionaire and also the person who wrote all the books that, you know, saved her. But first she had to save herself. And in fact, in the marriage, she saves him as well. So the two of them leave responsible society. They go to the back of beyond. They live in their little cabin and they get really into nature and they get into going on long hikes and really appreciating all the things that are in non-society. Dandelions shouldn't grow in the woods, though. They haven't any sense of the fitness of things at all. They're too cheerful and self-satisfied. They haven't any of the mystery and reserve of the real wood flowers. In short, they've no secret, said Barney, but wait a bit. The woods will have their own way, even with these obvious dandelions. In a little while, all that obtrusive yellowness and complacency will be gone, and we'll find here misty, phantom-like globes hovering over those long grasses in full harmony with the traditions of the forest. And several times her husband asks her, would you be happier if you could live in a house like that? Would you be happier if you could do that thing? And each time she says no. And of course, by the end of the book, you discover that he can give her those things, and they decide to take them but it's all about finding yourself and finding the places where, you know, joy can be found in so many things that are not all that expensive. Warm fire, books, comfort, safety from storm, our cats on the rug. Moonlight, said Barney. Would you be any happier now if you had a million dollars? No, nor half so happy. I'd be bored by conventions and obligations then. Would you like a house like that moonlight? Barney asked once waving his hand at it. He had taken to calling her Moonlight, and Valancey loved it. No, said Valancey, who had once dreamed of a mountain castle ten times the size of that rich man's cottage, and now pitied the poor inhabitants of palaces. No, it's too elegant. I would have to carry it with me everywhere I go, on my back like a snail. It would own me, possess me, body and soul. I like a house I can love and cuddle and boss, just like our here, ours here. I don't envy Hamilton Gossard, the finest summer residence in Canada. It is magnificent, but it isn't my Blue Castle. So I think it's clear why Blue Castle strikes a chord with so many people. The emphasis of being focused on how to be true to you, to push back occasionally on what your family thinks, to grab hold of the things that will bring your soul joy. And for me in particular, it was the promise that if we focus on the little things in life, that there is beauty and joy in so many other places. And there's beauty and joy in the walks that I go on if I just pay enough attention. My family doesn't understand what I'm doing right now. Going for more time instead of going for more money, not staying in the rat race. And Blue Castle reminds me that that's always been a path that was available to me, that it was a path that I was interested in, that this isn't something new and weird for me. This is part of my foundation. So maybe this is one of the books that saved me too. Are there any books that saved you? 
um, that you go back to or thinking back, you're like, that taught me something really important for life. Love to hear about it. And uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe. Talk to you soon. What's interesting is, is that as she's released from this fear, as she decides to start speaking her mind, she discovers that actually the constraints were not totally all there. While her family continues to judge her decisions, they actually are starting to think a little bit more about what her preferences are and don't just like expect her to go along with everything that they want. So it's interesting, she had a lot more freedom than she ever considered.